Um, hello, everyone. Um, today we'll be uh, starting the session for um, the Department Day presentation for uh, Biological Sciences. Um, I'm Rafsan Rahman Ryan, and today uh, I'll be moderating this meeting. So uh, today our presenter is Azamat Armanuli. Uh, he's in his sixth, sixth semester, um, double majoring in Biological Sciences and Biobrain Engineering. So um, before we start with uh, Azamat's presentation, um, I would like to get a few things uh, in the clear. So um, first things first, whenever you have any questions, um, please uh, use the link I have given in the chat. Um, so there you can uh, ask your questions. And if you see your question already, um, so someone else has already asked it, please like it instead of asking it again so that we can ask our que questions more uh, quickly. And um, you can use the uh, question uh, anytime you want, but we'll answer them after Azamat's presentation. So um, without further ado, um, we'll pro proceed to Azamat. Um, thank you, everyone. Hey, yes, thank you, Rafsan. Can you, can you hear me? Everyone? Yeah, loud and clear. Thanks. Okay, uh, first let me share my presentation slides. A few seconds. Yep. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, welcome to department presentation day. Uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about my department which is biological sciences. Okay. So firstly, uh, let me start with uh, telling some information about myself. Uh, actually, uh, I'm a junior student uh, double majoring in biological sciences and bio and brain engineering. So I uh, so yes, uh, my first major is uh, biological sciences, uh, but I also decided to go to bio and brain engineering. And uh, currently uh, I'm working in the laboratory of neural interception, uh, which studies uh, neural and cognitive processes in living organisms. And we also uh, carry out some important experiments with uh, mice and with uh, other animals uh, as well. And uh, also, uh, currently, uh, I'm a KISA welfare team member. So I'm working uh, almost second semester in this team. So it's a very, very, very important uh, volunteering job for me. OK, okay so um, let's talk about uh, why I chose uh, biological sciences. Um, so uh, before going to uh, KAIST, I already decided uh, to do uh, biological sciences at university uh, since uh, I was participating in different Olympiads uh, during my high school time. And also I did some research projects with my high school teachers. And so uh, biological, bio biological sciences uh, seem like very interesting to me and fascinated with uh, with the beauty of nature. And I wanted to uh, learn about uh, this science uh, in depth. And I tried to do some research by myself and I searched for um, highly ranked universities uh, on the internet. And I found out uh, KAIST, uh, which is uh, like very, very uh, top-ranked university, uh, not only in technical majors, but also in natural sciences. So I decided to go to biosciences. And of course, uh, I had enough motivation to study, to study more, uh, to study deeply. And from my childhood, uh, I liked to observe, uh, I liked to um, kind of carry out some experiments uh, in nature. 
so it's uh, it was fun for me to study actually so uh, the next question is about uh, what can we learn from uh, biosciences and from bio department so i think uh, the first the first uh, thing is uh, doing research so i mean uh, KAIST gives us a very good opportunity to do research, especially in ERP, which is Undergraduate Research uh, Participation Program. And um, I will talk about uh, this uh, program a little bit uh, in detail, but later. So I think uh, every one of us should try to apply for this um, ERP program and try to do some interesting research with uh, professors. Okay. Also, I think uh, the most important part of learning any subject or any science uh, is self-discipline. Uh, because uh, we're spending a lot of uh, time to learn new things, but uh, to learn uh, effectively, we must to we must organize uh, our time schedule. And uh, I mean, we should prioritize uh, some important things in our lives. So it's about uh, self-discipline. And uh, from self-discipline, we get uh, self-study. Yeah. Um, besides um, lectures, uh, besides um, KLMS videos, uh, I know that uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, has changed uh, the way of teaching very significantly. Uh, despite, we should learn uh, by ourselves, like uh, searching for new information or uh, reading textbooks and etc. Yeah. So, and the second important thing is about uh, patience. Yeah. Biological sciences, um, I know it, uh, it might be very hard for some people, but uh, it requires a lot of patience. So we must be patient while learning uh, new information or new things to open up uh, new horizons. Oops. Okay. Um, and uh, I think uh, also we must talk about course requirements. So firstly, you can check uh, all the uh, course course uh, courses uh, in the website on the website of uh, KAIST uh, biological department uh, biological science department. So uh, here you can find out uh, all the required courses, uh, including basic courses, uh, elective courses. So for example, uh, during my first uh, first year, during my freshman year, uh, I took, um, for example, a general biology course. I started with general biology and I went on with uh, some basic courses like uh, biochemistry one and then biochemistry two, molecular biology and so on. And besides that, of course, I covered all the, almost all the uh, basic courses in other sciences, like uh, physics one and two, uh, calculus. But uh, ironically, I made uh, some mistakes uh, because uh, I hadn't, uh, I hadn't, uh, I mean, I haven't used my chance to take CS course, CS101, because uh, I think I wasn't uh, lucky to register this course. Uh, every time I tried my best, this course uh, wasn't registered for me. So maybe uh, the next semester I should take CS101, and so I can cover my all the basic courses. Or required courses, I mean. Okay, and then um, you can check KAIST uh, bulletin, uh, which, uh, how many credits uh, do you need? Uh, for example, for double major or 
or for advanced major and etc. So uh, these websites are very useful to organize your schedule or your plan for four year. Okay. And also, um, my opinion, uh, you should follow uh, some advices. I mean, for example, um, during lectures, while lectures, um, professors uh, try to cover a particular topic um, briefly. But uh, I prefer reading textbooks uh, because um, they give a very detailed picture of uh, what I'm learning. And for example, uh, some if uh, in biology we learn a lot of uh, mechanisms or processes, so. In order to understand uh, all of them, you need to read textbooks in detail. Um, okay, this is the first one. And also, of course, uh, before taking final exams or midterm exams uh, or quizzes, whatever, uh, it's very important to summarize all the lecture notes uh, given by professors or lecture notes that uh, you were writing, uh, for example, throughout entire semester, yeah. Okay, then um, also I prefer using Quizlet application. I mean, I mean Quizlet app to memorize some important definitions, uh, including, uh, for example, uh, while I was taking neurobiology course, uh, we learned so much, uh, I mean, so many definitions uh, that it was very hard to memorize all of them. Yeah. And also uh, it's important to ask professors for anything that you don't understand, for anything that you don't know. And professors uh, always are willing to help you at any time and um, besides that, you can discuss your research topic with professors. And for example, uh, during my second year, I went to my advisor and my advisor helped me out in many things. For example, to organize uh, my further plan for third year and for the final year. So, I mean, uh, it was very useful to talk with my advisor professor. And also finally, um, never forget about uh, experimental classes in biological sciences. So I think it was my second mistake that uh, I didn't take enough experimental classes. And uh, because of this pandemic, uh, currently I am residing in my home country, but I'm planning to go next semester to Korea. So uh, I need to, for example, take uh, such experimental classes as um, cell biology experiment and biochem experiment classes that I didn't take during my uh, first and second year. Yep. Okay. So uh, what's interesting about uh, biology in general? So I think uh, biological, uh, biological sciences are unique uh, in a way that uh, it integrates um, several natural sciences. For example, uh, when I was taking physical chemistry for life sciences, uh, we learned uh, a lot of concepts uh, that intersect with each other. Uh, like physics concepts, uh, physics laws intersecting with chemistry. And of course, chemistry is tightly connected to biology. So it was very important to integrate uh, and unite all these concepts into one piece to understand the whole picture in biology. So, and on the other hand, uh, it was uh, very interesting to learn about physics, chemistry, some statistics and biology at one time because it gives uh, so many insights uh, about biology. Maybe you can uh, look up 
at biology from another perspective. Yeah, it's it was very interesting. Yeah, and I can uh, give an example. Like, for example, um, uh, while we were learning about microscopes, uh, we considered some uh, aspects from physics like optics. So, um, I mean, it was very useful to take physics uh, one during my freshman year uh, so that I can, I could apply my physics knowledge into biology. So, um, and of course, um, you should take uh, general chemistry for biology, general chemistry one and two, and uh, at least a general one chemistry lab uh, to get some uh, practical skills uh, in chemistry. Oh, it was very important. Yeah, as you can see uh, from this uh, presentation of professor, uh, you can see that we are learning some optics and we are learning about uh, lens structure and applying some uh, maths equation from calculus. Yeah, it's very interesting. Okay, also um, I found out more interesting courses in uh, biological science uh, department. Uh, for example, uh, the last semester I took structural biology class. Um, this class is about coding skill. I mean, uh, we learned, um, for example, it was uh, new for me to learn about PyMO language uh, with, along with Linux uh, coding terminal. So, so that uh, I can apply my coding skills to build up a design for a particular protein molecule so that uh, I can edit or modify uh, the sequences of this protein. And of course, uh, we worked a lot uh, with mathematics. Actually, it's, it requires uh, some uh, math skills to understand the structure of uh, these fascinating molecules. Yeah. Of course, um, before taking this class, I didn't have any programming background, uh, sadly. Uh, but uh, now uh, I'm trying to learn Python and uh, to get some insights about, uh, about like how to code um, in CS101. So I'm preparing for actually for CS101 course. Yep. Yeah. So um, again, uh, it was very important to learn these new coding skills in order to you know to be able to construct uh, some of these molecules yeah i also recommend to take this class um, but uh, one i mean one recommendation is that this course is uh, very close to graduate level course but still uh, some undergraduates are taking this course. And for example, uh, Linux language terminal looks like this. And, and here I try to modify some uh, protein sequences to get the whole picture in PyMol window. Yeah. And maybe um, some programmers uh, maybe are familiar with Linux coding language because uh, it is based on C plus language, actually. Yeah. Okay, and then I think uh, lastly, I can talk about more European research. So I have applied for 2020 winter European program with my team, including my uh, teammates uh, who are. Uh, or in their senior year um, with uh, one Korean teammate and with one uh, my teammate, actually he's from Kazakhstan also. 
and we were uh, so the main topic of uh, my European research was like this. Yeah, it sounds very uh, difficult, very uh, unfamiliar to you, but briefly, um, the main point of this research is to develop uh, some drugs uh, against uh, diabetes. And so we can control uh, appetite in mice. So it was very interesting uh, to carry out experiments uh, to analyze and their DNA, yeah. But uh, unfortunately, I I worked only three months in this laboratory, and I went to I actually I came back to my home home country, um, and I I'm still residing here, uh, so so that I had any chance to continue my European research. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, I think you can get many benefits uh, from this program, including like scholarship um, with the amount of, if as far as I know, it's a 2 million uh, Korean won for team and one and a half million for one person. I mean, individually. Yeah. So it gives a lot of uh, chance to explore biological science from new experiment, a new perspective from practical side. Yeah. Also, of course, uh, you can apply for ERP credit, uh, which gives you three credits for doing your research. Yeah. And besides that, um, you can publish uh, some papers on journals with your professor. And in my opinion, uh, as this uh, publishing will benefit you during application to maybe graduate school in future, it's very important to do uh, your research. So, and finally, it's about getting uh, some experience in laboratories, um, developing your laboratory skills, uh, working with uh, some equipment, uh, for example, with microscopes and other equipments. Yeah, it's about experience. It's about skills uh, in the first place. Yeah, it's very important, I guess. And yeah, you can try to apply uh, for this program at any time, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's, uh, twice during one year. Yeah, yeah, you can apply for winter or for summer program. Yeah. And before, uh, uh, before application, uh, you should propose some uh, research topic. Uh, either individually or with a group of your teammates. Yeah, uh, ah, especially uh, for biology, uh, team should consist of uh, maximum three people, three students. Yeah. Okay, and what else I can add up? Ah, um, and events. So our department provides uh, some conferences uh, about current uh, topics, current uh, science topics and research topics in biology. So uh, you can participate at any time, yeah, and have fun. So I guess uh, that's it. I expect uh, questions from you or you can share your opinion or any experience. So please ask questions. I'm ready to answer them. Okay, um, thank you, Azamat, for the wonderful presentation. So um, we'll um, continue on to the Q&A session now. Um, so um, we have some questions uh, for you. So the first question is, um, what would you say is the international student experience in the biological sciences department? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a very good question. I think um, as an international student, I didn't face any difficulty to understand lectures given by Korean professors. And I think um, 
Yeah, there are still some courses in Korean, like epigenetics course, uh, but still uh, I didn't have any problem with taking biology, biology courses in English. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the main problem can be about yeah language barrier uh, because some professor might explain in Korean during the middle of the lecture, but it didn't happen uh, in my experience. I didn't expect anything like this. I mean, so it's very uh, comfortable uh, to discuss anything with professor. Uh, professor understands uh, English very well. Yeah, I think, yeah, no problem. Well, that's very good to know. So um, we have another question for you. So um, what are the career prospects for a behavioral neuroscience major as compared to MBBS or MBCHB degree program? Oh, uh, well, so, I mean, um, there are many, uh, I mean, many choices uh, to go after undergraduate, for example, uh, you can go to graduate programs in USA or maybe even in Korea. Um, so uh, now I have two options, uh, starting with uh, going our, as a researcher in future, or maybe I can go to be a doctor by entering medical school again. Yeah, because uh, at uh, my childhood, I had a dream to be a doctor, to be a neurosurgeon. And since uh, I was very interested in learning about brain, and I guess uh, I can apply to, to the two options, either to become a researcher in my field or either to become a, a trained uh, doctor in medicine, yeah. But um, also uh, the reason uh, why I'm doing double major is that I have also a third option, especially. I can go to maybe some industry to make drugs or vaccines because um, mind brain engineering is about uh, developing drugs. And um, it's also about uh, making vaccines uh, and making maybe some equipments for disabled people. Yeah. So there are many uh, options to go to continue your career. Right. Thank you, Azamat. Um, so we have another question. So um, what are the best engineering courses to pair with biological sciences for a double major? And um, like, oh, Although we already know that you are um, double majoring in biological science and bio and brain, would you like to elaborate on um, how this pair works with each other as a double major or major minor? How they complement or work with each other? Yeah, also a very uh, reasonable question, I guess. And I think. Um, Biological sciences are mostly about pure research. So you learn some uh, scientific concepts, uh, uh, maybe having very less application, but engineering sphere, engineering field has uh, many applications um, in various aspects of our, our lives. Again, about like developing chips for brain, or it might be coding uh, to again construct proteins or whatever. So I think uh, engineering complements uh, biological sciences in a very good way. So you can see how these uh, scientific concepts can be applied in real life. Yeah. And also, biological sciences uh, uh, help students in engineering to understand some basic concepts or review some basic concepts so that they can, uh, I mean, establish very good uh, foundation for engineering. Yeah. 
Okay, um, right. Uh, there's another question for you. Um, what are the fastest growing um, divisions of biology? Like which fields do you think are advancing most? Yeah, uh, divisions, uh, this person means about fields, yeah? Or spheres of biology. Yeah. Uh, uh, as far as I'm familiar, um, currently, uh, I mean, yeah, nowadays, uh, molecular biology and along with um, developmental biology are growing very fast. And also, uh, we must uh, know that genetics is also growing. For example, a lot of, uh, a lot of modern edge uh, methods were developed to fight with uh, many diseases. Yeah, and I think uh, molecular biology, genetics, and maybe neurobiology have very good, uh, I mean, reason to grow fast because our society requires uh, the latest achievements uh, from these fields. I mean, for example, uh, molecular biology uh, is very essential to develop some new methods uh, in immunology. For example, we can, again, design very effective vaccines or drugs, uh, especially during COVID era. Yeah. So, I mean, the 21st century is about genetics and biotechnology including molecular bi biology concepts yeah okay um next question um what were the course requirements you had to meet to pursue your double major yep so along with uh basic and required courses uh i need to take math courses uh, now i'm taking statistics and probability course to pursue uh, my double major and also i need to take and follow up experimental classes and of course uh, in engineering uh, i must be able to code very well in python or i mean as i remember there were courses about c plus and python at very advanced level so i'm planning to take these courses in the next semester in the next year so yeah okay um and another question um so uh, someone asked that if they want to avoid coding or programming in the future um, should I go to biological sciences or do you suggest not to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, if you're if you're ready to pursue maybe a research uh, career or I mean to be a scientist, to be a good scientist, uh, you can go to, of course, to biological sciences. Uh, I, ah, one thing that I didn't mention is, is that biology is not always memorizing or learning only facts. I mean, biology might be interesting in unexpected ways. I mean, if you understand some basic concepts, uh, there is no need to memorize, but Unfortunately, some courses here at KAIST, of course, require memorization, memorizing a lot of definitions uh, that are useless, for example. And, but still, still, uh, there are um, very good courses, like, as I said, physical chemistry for life science students. It's a very good course because, um, here we can solve very real life problems uh, from physics, chemistry, and from statistics. Uh, I think 
uh, KAIST uh, still offers uh, interesting courses about learning, not memorizing. Yeah. And also, yeah, if you are, uh, want to avoid coding in the future, yeah, yes, you can go to logical science, definitely. Okay, um, so the next part is, um, if someone is not majoring in biological sciences, can they still take some of the courses? And which courses would you actually um, recommend for these non-majoring students? Uh, yeah, from biosciences, you can take maybe general biology, firstly, uh, because this course is not so difficult. Uh, I mean, everyone take, ah, besides general biology, you can maybe try molecular biology uh, and or cellular biology to get some interesting concepts. And if you're interested in neuroscience, you can take neurobiology. Yeah. What else? And um, so uh, another question is that, is it possible to go to medical school after graduating from the biological science department? Yes, I think it's uh, very possible. Uh, pretty much possible uh, because you can uh, you must take MCAT exam which is uh, required for pre-med students in order to go med school but um, this exam requires um, university-based uh, knowledge especially uh, that we learned during uh, four-year undergraduate program, uh, we can apply it in this exam, actually. Yeah. And also, uh, I think it's very possible. Uh, you can apply into top-ranked uh, med medical schools around the world. And of course, they require a high GPA, at least um, higher than 3.0 and as well as uh, recommendation letters, motivation letter. It's a, it's, I mean, it's an unusual process to apply for similar to graduate school application. Yeah, something like that. Um, okay, so another question is, um, why did you decide to um, double major? Okay, again, uh, as we know, our world changes uh, very fast every day. Uh, there are new inventions, uh, there are new innovations. So that, again, considering uh, job market and career perspective, I decided to back up myself because in case of maybe like in case if graduate school uh, will be very difficult or if it turns out that doing research is not mine, then I can go to industry or any other field to continue my career, but not as a scientist, but as a uh, maybe innovator or inventor. Yeah. And also uh, it seems very interesting and very fascinating again to me to do engineering also. And from my high school, uh, I liked all the natural sciences, besides biology. Yeah, that's it. Okay, um, so another question is that, um, how does the uh, guys biological science department differ from the NSU medicine department? Do you have any idea about this? I guess, uh, honestly, uh, I don't know in detail, but in general, I think here at KAIS, uh, we learn biology as a science. I mean, we learn, for example, very broad concepts maybe, uh, but in medical school, 
you will learn about such fields as anatomy or physiology of uh, human. And you will do, of course, a lot of surgeon, maybe practice, or maybe you can train as a physician. So uh, I think the main difference is uh, the main difference here is about uh, learning science at KAIST. I mean, considering latest scientific uh, discoveries, uh, considering scientific background, but at SNU maybe or at uh, other medical school, you can learn medical concepts only. Yeah. Good response. Um, so another question for you is that, um, and it's again related to programming. So um, which courses in the biological sciences department make you do some programming? Um, are there any of the major required courses that need programming or can we uh, avoid any of those courses? Yes, uh, as far as I, I experienced, I think uh, there are no requirements in programming language to take any courses in biological sciences except for structural biology course. Uh, they uh, recommended to know, like to be fam familiar with Python at least by, <laughs> since I didn't take CS 101, uh, it wasn't uh, so bad the first time because at the first half of this course, I mean, in bio uh, structural biology, we uh, learned about mathematics and calculus, how to apply uh, calculus equations into biology. Uh, it wasn't uh, very hard because I took both calculus classes. And, but after, uh, after the first half, we started to learn about PyMol programming language, uh, which is a graphical language. All you need to do is just um, learn a um, few manipulations. Uh, but the most difficult part was uh, Linux programming language uh, due, to, due to the fact that uh, I wasn't familiar with C++ language or with any command, uh, command based uh, language from programming field. Yeah. So as a bio student, uh, I faced some difficulties uh, during the second half of the second half of this course. Yeah. Okay. Um, another question is: um, During uh, undergraduates, are there any internship opportunities for the students? Yes, I think so. Uh, there are many opportunities, and there are many companies that you can apply, but. I didn't try to apply to companies in Korea because most of them require Korean language proficiency, at least maybe uh, upper intermediate or advanced levels. Uh, but I tried to apply, for example, to companies in my home country uh, to work as a teacher yeah, or teaching assistant here at some uh, education centers. Yes, currently I'm working as a teacher in biology and chemistry. So um, you can use any opportunity, not only in Korea or in foreign country, but at your home country, it's possible. Um, so uh, another question for you is, how long does it take in total to become a researcher in the biological field? Okay, it's also a very good question. Uh, as my professor told, uh, advisor professor uh, told me, he's actually from uh, Johns Hopkins University, and he told me that it takes uh, several years to train as a researcher. And besides that, it requires uh, tons of dedication, hard work. Yeah. Maybe I think uh, 
to, be, to become a full researcher or a good researcher, at least uh, five or 10 years are required. And, but again, it's possible to go straight into a PhD program by skipping MS uh, so that you can become a full researcher after five years in, in average. Okay, so um, if anyone has any further questions, um, please ask ahead. But I think we are um, heading towards uh, closure now. So um, Azamat, if you uh, would uh, go ahead, um, could you give uh, like any concluding remarks? Yeah, sure. So by concluding our conference, um, I would like to say that Biological sciences are open to any student who is willing to get uh, some knowledge from our department or some insights. Uh, I mean, any student from other departments also can join biological sciences, uh, I guess. Uh, also, my department is very friendly to international students. Uh, they are trying their best to provide uh, best conditions to learn, uh, especially during COVID year and especially during online lectures. Uh, even they are providing uh, English scripts uh, in case they ask questions in Korean or in case they explain in Korean. So it's very nice uh, in our department. With, uh, with a lot of events for international students and with research opportunities, uh, you can join any lab uh, in our department, starting from molecular biology lab, going into maybe some difficult labs as uh, cancer lab. Yeah, it depends on your choice, uh, on your research interest. So yes, we are open and we are uh, welcoming you in our, de in our department. So thank you for your kind attention. Thank okay, you for so, um, Thank you everyone for attending this meeting. Um, so I hope everyone has a wonderful day and everyone enjoyed the uh, department day presentations for all departments and I would also like to thank you Azamat for spending some time with us today and presenting your department. Um, so with that I would like to conclude our uh, meeting today. Thank you everyone for attending once again. Bye bye.